All right, let's do this thing. Today, I'm gonna to talk about approaching a machine learning problem, specifically for the Kaggle competition that we're doing as part of the Professional Master's Program Machine Learning course at the University of Washington. But if you're not in that course, you may still enjoy this, and I'll put a link below. The course is free and online, 30 hours of lectures. Join us, suffer through it the way everybody else who's watching this video has. would love to have you. Now we're gonna talk about how to do this assignment, how to approach it. And you can see there's 10 steps, starting with we don't know yet, but ending with celebration. So we're gonna go through these, they're gonna be very concrete. So the first thing that you need to do is come up with a little bit of code that's gonna help you do the work in the other eight steps. And this is code that manages your hyperparameter sweeps. Let me show you what mine looks like. It starts off with a list, and what I'm gonna do is create a list of hyperparameter objects. Call them each params, you can see them right there. Each one of them is simply a dictionary that maps from the parameter name to the value to use for that parameter. Then I loop over each of the parameters and build up the cross product of all those different parameter settings. I create a list that stores them all, append it there, and then I just do the runs. Here's the code for execute on params. It does feature selection using the relevant parameter settings that you have in the params object that's passed there. It'll go look at the training data, probably the training labels and actual feature values, compute the features to use, and then apply it to the validation and test data. A little bit of bookkeeping there, create the logistic regression model that you're gonna use, and then run fit with the appropriate parameter settings which you passed in as part of the object. Uh, get predictions on the validation set, and then it stores the model's loss on the validation data back into the params object and returns the object. And that's what appears in the list, is a, a copy of the dictionary with the parameters that were run and the loss that those parameters achieved. This is gonna be very useful. We'll see how in several steps this just makes things much, much easier. The next thing you need to do is some basic feature engineering. And we talked a lot in lecture two about approaches to feature engineering for text. This particular problem is a small SMS message spam competition. So you might wanna go and implement several of those. Maybe do the two that we did in homework, which are feature selection by the number of features, feature selection by mutual information. Maybe pick a few others from the lecture that you like start with simple ones. Don't spend too much time at this point. Just get a few options to try when you're going to do your parameter run. Implement them, a few hours, move on. Now you need to plan your hyperparameter tuning run. So here's a code that I showed on the previous snippet, and you can see I've decided to tune iterations, numbers of the number of features that I use for feature selection, and whether or not I use some handcrafted heuristics that I created. You can see also that the number of iterations I'm using is quite small. And here's where you have to balance. How much time does each parameter setting take to run and evaluate versus how many parameter settings you wanna try? So the first thing you might wanna do is do uh, runs that are relatively quick, maybe use samples of the training data or a small number of iterations so the, the model fits more quickly but then explore a broad space of your other parameters. And the goal here is to just get oriented, start to figure out where you're gonna to wanna to drill in and spend more time as you go on. Then you have to execute the tuning run. And again, back to that code, you press run, you can see that this thing here is gonna go. And if you recall from previous assignments, uh, we implemented our own logistic regression code. It's not super fast. The goal of this is not to optimize, so that line there, could easily take hours, several hours. If you go crazy and planned the wrong parameter tuning run, it could take days. You really have to think um, when you're planning how much time you're gonna spend. But once you kick it off, if it's gonna take four, five, six, seven hours, don't worry, relax, drink coffee, let the computer work. You don't have to go and optimize a bunch of stuff. That's not what this course is about. Really, don't think, oh no, something's going wrong, this is gonna take an hour, I need to spend a whole bunch of my time to make that go faster, because really, once you're done with this, you're not gonna use this code anymore, it's not important. But let me give you one simple optimization that could really help. It's this thing called Joblib, and it lets you take this loop there across all the different parameter settings, and instead of doing it in sequence, 
do it in parallel by just changing, you know, very little code. And that's all there is. You know, I have a 12 uh, core CPU, or maybe it's 16 core CPU. I do eight runs, 8x speed up. Pretty awesome, almost no work. You should totally do this, but don't do much other optimization. When you're done with that, make sure you print out all those dictionaries so that you have a file that looks something like this. Here you can see the parameter settings that I had for each of my runs. Each of these rows is one of those dictionary objects. You can see what the parameter values were and what the loss that was achieved on the validation data by using that parameter setting. In this case, you might want to do some interpretation. So, you know, I only ran with two values for iterations, but maybe you ran with four or six and you want to make a plot. So you can see, is more iterations helping? Is it helping a lot? Uh, maybe you make another plot of num features with num features on the x-axis, validation loss on the y-axis. Start to get a sense of visualizing how sensitive is the validation loss to each of these parameters and am I heading in the right direction? Um, um, do I need to go further? These are the types of questions that you want to ask here. So in this simple case, of course, you can just look at the data and visualize it, and you can see that iterations of 2,000, num features of 15 seem to be the right values. Looks like those parameters should be higher. So maybe that's what you learn from visualizing and thinking. And then now that you've interpreted it, you don't want to run the model on the test set yet. What you might want to do is go back and plan another hyperparameter tuning run. Maybe you find a few of the parameter settings that you want. You've just decided those heuristics are great. I'm going to use them. Take that out. But then spend those extra runs exploring other parameters further, like in the case we saw previously, up the iterations and up the number of features that you use. Remember, if you can get down to fewer parameter settings, like maybe you're just chasing num features and you want to just go further, maybe you would want to use more iterations and let the model converge further before making the decision. But you know, that's a balance with the amount of time that you want to wait. So set up another run that's going to take another two or three hours. Press go, get some more coffee, relax some more, do yoga, whatever it is that you like to do. Take a walk, it's beautiful out. Well, not really, it's Seattle in the fall, but pretend it's beautiful and take a walk anyway. Then when you're done and you've done several runs of these hyperparameter tuning and you feel like you're kind of hitting diminishing returns with the features that you have, Take a look at your test set. Execute your best setting, look at the accuracy on your test set, and decide, is this good enough? If your accuracy is like in the 80s, you might go to the Kaggle site and see that the baseline is 90 and be like, ooh, maybe I didn't get where I need to get. And so maybe I did the wrong feature engineering. Let's go back, look at the things in the lecture, look at the slides, pick another feature engineering approach. And then iterate again. If you implement new features, you need to retune the hyperparameters. Start where you were um, from the previous run, add in the new features, see if it's better, maybe retweak, do a little bit of local search for the parameter settings that uh, were sensitive on your first run, and then go on. After a while, you're going to get tired of this and you're going to start beating the baseline. And then you're going to say, OK, now I need to get the perfect model that I want to submit to the Kaggle site to see if I'm done, see if that's that's the end of this assignment for me, see if I can succeed. So now you go back, take the best hyperparameter setting that you found in all of that previous search, combine all your train, validate, and test data into one big blob and build the best model you can. Now I've said in the past, don't train on the test data, but this isn't really the test data. The test data is on the Kaggle server. So that's the data that you need to perform on. The test data you had here was just to make sure that your uh, parameter tuning was heading in the right direction and to answer the question of, should I go back and try some more? So just combine it all up, build one huge model. Here's the code that I have uh, written to do that, and it uses the support code that I've provided to you, this SMS spam Kaggle support. Load Kaggle data. Uh, the data for the Kaggle competitions in a different format than the training data that you've been using in previous assignments. The previous data has the label on it, the Kaggle data just has an ID. There's no label there. So this code loads it, deals with that difference, and, and maintains the mapping between the ID and the message that we're going to need later. Then you do the full run using the best parameters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Do your predictions. And then here's another little bit of support code that takes the predictions and the IDs and 
creates the file that you're going to upload directly to the Kaggle server in the right format with the right headers. So do that. It'll write it out to that path for you. Now you're in great shape. Submit to the Kaggle competition. Then you're going to see something like this on the Kaggle site. It'll, it'll ingest your answers and it'll score you. Here you'll see that this is the baseline answer. That's the answer that uh, you have to beat to get pretty much full credit. Um, there's a, we're going to upload another one in a few days, I think, which might be a slightly better, but it looks like you know, two of these submissions are already at 98%, a few of them are at 96%. Those people look like they're in pretty good shape. If, you're, if your accuracy came in at like 80%, you might be like, oops, something's wrong. I better go back and check for bugs or check, check what went wrong. But remember that this value that you're going to see when you upload is calculated on just 50% of the test data. The other 50% is reserved for the final score. So remember the bounds that we talked about, how to put confidence intervals on what the actual accuracy of your model is. We talked about that in lecture three. I'll put a link below if you want to go check that out again. Um, so run some bounds. Think about, you know, I see a particular accuracy. Am I confident that I'm going to beat that baseline or should I try a little bit harder? And then when you are confident that you're not going to do, <laughs> that you're not happy with what you got, you might go back to the beginning and iterate again. Remember, you can submit one or two to the Kaggle competition per day. So from the time you see this video, you may have 10 or 15 more submissions to go, 10 or 12 more submissions to go. I hope you don't need all of those, but you have them. Use, the, use them in the first few days so that you're not stuck at the end with only one or two submissions before the assignment is due. All right, you made it to the end. You're in great shape for this assignment, but the template that I presented here is also a great place to start for any machine learning problem that you bump into. If you liked this video, please hit like and also subscribe because I'll be posting additional videos as the weeks go on. And I may even continue posting after the course is done, just things I learn about machine learning, what I find interesting, new techniques, all sorts of stuff. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Peace.